began in 1981. My mom wasn't feeling well. She drove herself to the doctor. The doctor said, I know why you're not feeling well. You've, uh, you're in labor. Early uh, labor uh, indications were very evident. And uh, she said, well, you don't understand. I'm six weeks early. He said, well, yeah, I do understand, but we don't have a choice. We've got to take you. So they took her over by ambulance to the hospital. And at 545 p.m. at night, as Jerry Clower would say, my sister was born. And at 554 at night, I was born. My sister came along. She had some respiratory problems. Uh, they took her back into the neonatal unit there. I came along, barely had a pulse, no respirations at all. They rushed me immediately into the intensive care and my aunt tells the story of, she got there a little bit late in my classic aunt fashion. Everybody's got somebody in the family like that. She got there a little bit late and saw that I was going one way and my sister was going the other. And she said, wait a minute, they, they go together. And they said, well, he's a lot more critical than she is. And that's when she found out that I was having a fair amount of issues that my sister wasn't having. But I'm thankful that 16 days later, my sister came home and 19 days later, I came home. And my parents began our life together. But one story that my mom told me is she got a call after they had brought my sister home. She got a call that the heart monitor was giving them a reading that they didn't really like. And they said, well, we can't, uh, we can't let it come home until we figure out if it's a heart defect or, or something along those lines. And my mom tells the story immediately. I talked about it earlier, starting in prayer versus finishing in prayer. Yeah. My mom immediately fell to her knees and said, God, I don't understand what's going on here, but I'm putting everything in your hands. And whatever you give me, whatever situation you give me, I'll give you praise. Yeah. And the next day, the doctor called mama and says, is this Miss Tolleson? She said, yes, sir. He said, well... We found out that the reading that we were getting was a bad heart monitor, so we threw it in the trash. And if you don't come get your son, I'm going to put him out on the street. <laughs> That's a true story. So they came and got me, and uh, we began our life together. And at the age of three to four, when toddlers are getting into everything, my parents noticed that I wasn't moving as quickly as my sister. And they took me to Charlotte, and I was diagnosed with very mild cerebral palsy. And um, very blessed to have that and, and many times I, I say that and people are like what do you mean you're blessed weren't you laughed at well yes I was weren't you made fun of well yes I was don't people still point their finger at you yes they do I was in the grocery store the other day and they walk I'm walking down the aisle and a little, little child is looking at me like I'm, I'm bragging you can look at me all you want I'm bragging on Jesus amen he makes no mistakes the Bible tells us that and there were many times where people would say, well, he can't do this, he can't do that, he can't do this. Played football, played baseball, played basketball. Anything that I could do, my parents allowed me to do. And uh, one of the things that I realized at a very young age is that when you open your mouth, noise will come out. And I realized that I could sing, and I realized that I love to sing, and I realized that I love Southern Gospel music. Thanks to my grandma Moore, she listened to some guy named Bill Gaither. Anybody know who I'm talking about? He's going to video the rapture and sell it. I know he's going to do it. But I love it. I love singing Southern Gospel music, and that's my calling, and that's what God's given me to do. But here's the good news. He's given you something to do, too. And if you haven't figured out what that is, or you don't think, well, I can't preach, I can't sing, I bet you can make a mean banana pudding and drop it on somebody's doorstep and say, I'm just praying for you and wanted to share the love of Christ with you. That's, right. That's shooting fish in a barrel right there, people. Right. Well, you might want to be careful, but make sure it's somebody that you know because you don't want to get shot. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. But the point is sharing the love of Christ. And I've got a song, and, and I had a request to do this, so I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, most people request I don't do something, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just joking. But uh, I've got a song on my project, my story, uh, that simply talks about the verse in the Bible where God says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. How many is thankful for that? 
You might be walking through a valley today that you feel like you're out there on an island. You feel like you're alone. I've got news for you. You're never alone. It's so 